everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev and in this quick win I want to show you how you can easily use a map view in your React Native application. I found this to be unbelievably easy so I wanted to do this quick video and cover the basic ground in like 10 minutes so you'll be up and running with a map view in just a matter of minutes. So what I did so far is I created an Expo application as I want to use Expo but you can actually also use it with a React Native CLI and I was using the tabs template so I got file based routing out of the box. I then deleted everything in my folder here uh, which destroyed my layout so I now have to do another index.tsx. Uh, putting in a default page and then also putting a new underscore layout file next to it and that should hopefully uh, fix my view again. I can then just return a simple stack navigation using Expo Router and if I run npx expo it should immediately bring up my preview again which I broke previously. Good. Additionally, the most important command to use the map is npx expo install react native maps. So this, uh, yeah, of course, I look at like this. This here is the important and the critical part that you want to do. So you can check out the map view in the expo documentation. It's actually a fairly long document. We're going to talk about this here in the end about the deployment. Uh, for now, I just wonder why my view is not coming up. Uh, okay, yeah, it's. Let's do this again. Let's just refresh this, press I and here is my application now finally loading on the screen. If you also want to change the title so it doesn't look that ugly, you can just go ahead and give your stack screen a name Now it will look like this. Okay, nothing fancy, nothing map related, just want to cover the basics. So if we would follow the usage here and we have installed the package, I will just grab that code, put it in here and oh, that, was, that was not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Why is my map not coming up? Um, probably because uh, how? What I did I do? <laughs> I should see my map. I should really see my maps. Oh my! It was working all the time. You destroyed the whole tension. That was so great. I just wanted to put it in and show you that it works like in one second. Anyway, here it is. Here is our map. Uh, we can even do this easier. I can remove this and use flex one in here. And if you don't want uh, styling and just want the map to fill the whole space, you can just use uh, style sheet dot absolute fill. And you see as a result, same behavior and the map fills our view. Good. So that is the starting point for the map. You see this is on the iOS simulator using Apple Maps. You can, or if you want to, you can use it. Usually people want to use uh, Google with it. So in that case, you can simply change this and use the provider. Uh, and I don't recommend you use a string. You're going to break a lot with that. You should use provider Google for your application. If you change that, immediately it becomes a Google map instead. By the way, this is usually focusing on what you select for the simulator. Uh, so on iOS on your Mac device, you can go to features, location, and then add something like a custom location. So this comes up or you can use a few of the Apple previously defined it and then it will set basically the location for your emulator. So how do we work with the map? This is just displaying the map. So let's talk about a few of the basics. The first thing that you usually want to do is you want to set an initial region for the map. That means when the web loads, it will focus on this region. So I can now just go ahead into the map and say, hey, my initial region is this. And now we see when the map loads, I'm suddenly here in San Francisco somewhere as this is uh, the initial region that I have specified. This won't change. So if you put this now into a state and change your initial region, it won't change. So you really have to set in that case uh, the region so you could keep uh, a state in here and then just use your initial region as the initial region and the state uh, the region can be changed if you want to that would be one idea additionally you can of course also change styling you can change a bunch of things i highly recommend that you check out the documentation here on the um on the react native maps and especially the map view component so we've covered provider and region and this is all you can do really there's a lot you can do with that component uh, just showing you two more things so what you could do as well is beyond that saying hey show the user location uh, which will result in the user location showing up here. So this is where I'm currently placed. Or you could also additionally add uh, show 
where is it? Show my location button. So now I'm of course covering this with my head, but I could now use this to dive into uh, where my user is currently focused. If I move away, I would go back there. So these are just the cool minor things about Google Maps that make the usage of the map view really, really easy. Um, beyond that, there are a few more things that I want to show you. So first of all, I want to show you that you can also control this, of course, from code. So what you can do is you can start by defining a map ref and then telling this use ref. It is of the type map view. Uh, okay. And then we assign our map ref to the map here. So this goes in. Uh, actually, oh, it can be undefined. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, what's your problem with that? Oh, uh, it's really, <laughs> I mean, it's an, um, is it the right map view from React Native Maps? Uh, mutable, yeah, that's always the problem with, I think I used it like this before, didn't I? Uh, I don't want to make this a TypeScript tutorial, so therefore I will just say that this could also be any. Um, that will, of course, remove our typings a bit, but it should work for now anyway. Um, so let's add a button. We can add a button. Let's add a button to the top bar. I will just use uh, navigation. Use navigation equals use navigation from the Expo router. And then we can simply add a button that we'll call a focus map function. So let's do a const focus map equals something something and then if we want to place a button to the top we could just do it like this so this is just using the navigation package and putting a touchable opacity in the header right slot that will then call our focus map you can place a button everywhere this tutorial is not about uh <laughs> about creating a button it's about the react native map so here is the focus button and if i click it nothing happens because so far we're not doing anything let's say you want to focus on a specific location so you could come up with the coordinates like this one for the green bay stadium and then you could go ahead with the map ref dot current and then you can call a bunch of features so i really hate that i can i just do it like this uh, if I do it like this, you would have the code completion for everything. So really, uh, it's possibly undefined. Yeah, I don't care right now. Uh, and in my case, I would probably pick any mate to region and then I would pass in the Green Bay Stadium region. So if I now click on focus, see what happens. Whoosh, we're immediately here and seeing the beautiful Lambeau field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, this is just one way. You can do a whole lot more. If you get the reference to your map, you can call all, um, not the events, but you can call all the methods on this. So we have used animate to region, but you could also use animate camera, for example. So if I would change this to animate camera, uh, we would have to change this and say, uh, please focus uh, the center on the Green Bay Stadium. And then you could even have another object saying, okay, please for the duration like this, like three seconds long. And if I do it like this, uh, it's not changing the zoom. We should probably change the zoom in that case as well. Uh, let the zoom change to, I don't know, 10. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's better. That's a whole lot better. This is even like a flying movie. I like that one. <laughs> so you see, this is the way how you could interact with your map from code. This is, of course, only the one way. It also works the other way. So you could set up a function that watches when the region changes. Let's do a simple on region change function. And we once again have great typings for all these functions, usually uh, only besides the, my map ref not working with the map view ref. So I could, what is this? Legacy map view mutable object map view undefined is not assignable to title legacy ref. What is this? What is really like what? Oh my. Um, so how can we use this? Well, we can simply plug into not the methods, but the events of the map view. Again, I highly recommend the map view document. It shows you everything. You should really study this uh, documentation if you want to use a map. So now I can go ahead and say on region change. So if I would use on region change, this would actually be called the whole time. Let me show you. Um, you see, my lock is going crazy when I do it. Instead, I probably recommend you want to use on region change uh, complete. That would do put a lock 
once when the region change actually has finished so really when the user is done and then you could maybe calculate i don't know new places or display new markers on the map oh that brings me to something yeah that's what i wanted to show you as well thank you thank you for mentioning that so you can of course also display markers on the map that's also a very common thing i have seen um what you might need to do maybe you want to do like a marathon you want to display some cool uh, locations along the view so i've created uh this file here this markers ts with some markers in san francisco and some san diego so just latitude longitude the usual stuff you know and let's see how we can display that on our map because again that is just so easy it's just so unbelievable easy and, <laughs> and that's why i wanted to show i actually felt bad about making this video but still I learned this, I didn't know it, and then I want to show you, so this is like the classic YouTube thing. I don't know if YouTube will punish me for it, but anyway, uh, I hope this is helpful. And if it is, leave, up, uh, leave a thumbs up, and of course, stay subscribed for even more in-depth videos. Now, I have changed my map view to have um, something inside. So now I can iterate my markers, I can say markers.map. And for every marker, and probably also want the index, we can now create our own marker component. For the key, I will use the index because I don't really have uh, an ID for the marker. Of course, that is not very recommended. Uh, you should use something unique for that. Additionally, we also, of course, need some coordinates, and the coordinate should be uh, the marker. I can just, I think I can just pass in the marker. And voila, with about yeah well if we say like three lines of code we now get our markers displayed here and out of the box i can click on them and nothing happens yeah i can i think yeah well with a double click i can of course zoom now if you want to also make them a bit more useful you can handle the press event on a marker as well so let's say uh, const on marker selected equals marker i will now use any because i don't really have the type for that and present an alert from react native so alert dot alert and then print out the marker name now i can pass this in and use the on press here of the marker and let's see i click this and i get nothing uh, and i click this and i get nothing why am i not getting anything uh, let's try and do a reload uh, still nothing. Is it marker? Oh yeah, we need to pass that to on marker selected, right? Uh -huh. So on marker selected gets the actual marker, and with that, boom, we can do this in a better way. Oh no, this is like going. R I hate it when my map turns. You can actually disable this with the settings as well. So now I can click on my markers. You can also change the appearance of a marker or what you maybe want is also a call out. So we can dive deeper. We have now nested markers inside the map, but inside that marker, uh, let's see, I wanna do this with a new line. Inside that marker, I will move the closing bracket here. Uh, I will place a call out. So that is the little wide view above the marker. We can once again have something like an on press event here of that call out. And in that view, you can actually have your own styling. Like I can say padding, padding 10. Yeah, that's not something. And then text, uh, Simon. All right, if I do it, uh, let's remove that. If I were to do it like this, we see up here and I probably you probably don't want to have like an on press for the marker and also for the call out I think that's probably not a good idea now we see I get this cool little pop-up and of course I could also just instead run like change the text font size or uh, use the marker dot name in here again and if I then click on the marker it would show the information and you could just create your own little call out and again the call out could also be pressed so if you want to press the call out just do another function call out pressed and then on the call out on pressed it's as easy as that let's see uh, what do I do I actually put out a lock right yeah so if I click a marker or click this we can see this huge object here uh, with all the information from actually not just the marker but also in general that point used uh, on our map so i really wanted to make this a quick 10 minute video actually it went to 50 minutes already 
uh, but showing you how you can add those markers. You see, actually, we have them in San Diego as well, nicely placed. And we now have the basics covered for adding a map, for uh, changing some of the properties, for using um, code to actually control the map or react to things happening in your map. You should know, understand how to use markers and callouts. And beyond that, there are two more things that I just want to highlight. The first one is that we on Galaxies have also now a full course with even more details on this, like changing the map style, using Google Places to um, create a view like this here where you can enter something and then search for it. You can change the styling and we will also talk about polygons, um, about drawing on the map and even clustering our map. So check it out on galaxies.dev. The React Native Maps course is now available. Beyond that, this course also shows something else and that is going to production mode. Um, if you want to use Google Maps in your app, you see with Expo Go, this just works. It just works because Expo included some keys here and made this work with Expo Go. However, in your own application, you won't have them. And if you want to use Google Maps, you need to set up a Google Cloud key. Um, you need some certificates for uh, Android. You need to create a specific key. And even for iOS, you pretty much need to do the same as you need that uh, project from the Google Cloud API, a key. And all of this needs to be configured correctly in your app JSON in Expo. So that was just a little caveat because it won't work immediately in your production environment. But if you want more information about that, check out the course on Galaxy. And beyond that, I just hope you enjoyed this quick win about React Native Maps. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding. Simon.